Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's episode of A Guy with a Scarf. I'm happy to be with Paola Marinone and Bengo Atamer from Buzz My Videos. Hello, hi. Hi, as everyone. You may know, hi, everyone. As you may know, they know a lot more than uh, as average people about YouTube. So the idea was to do a kind of what's new on YouTube, what's going on in YouTube land. Paola, enlighten us. Well, first of all, thank you for having us here. It's always a pleasure to, to talk to you and uh, listen to, to your point of views. Um, <clears throat> what's new in YouTube land? I would say from a business slash industry perspective, um, there are some data that I keep talking about because they are the key game changer uh, in the years to come. Um, I don't think they are like common common knowledge so far, and but I think that it tells the whole story of what's going to happen in the next five to ten years. So from an industry perspective, I think this is uh, a key um, key data that are going to define strategies moving on. So. There are two slides I just wanted to, to go through. This is the first one, which tells a couple of things. Um, this is basically the percentage of viewership by type of uh, share of TV, so it's connected TV. Um, the two things to look at here are basically, uh, actually three, um, streaming, it goes from in one year time from 34.3 to 37.7. It's quite a change, uh, to be fair, in one year time. Um, uh, broadcast is kind of stable, uh, didn't change much from 23.8 to 23.3. It went slightly down, but kind of the same. But uh, cable instead, it went from 30.2 to 27.6. That's it's basically the reverse jump, in a way, to, to what streaming is. Um, and I think this is a, a, it's very telling in one year time. So 12 months is a, it's a short period of time for such a, a big change. So it's something I personally would expect in like in three years time. It's like it's more natural. But 12 months is, a, is, is like really either a red flag, if it depends on how you look at it, or like it's a massive growth opportunity, and depending again on how you look at it. And this and then, is big screen only, sorry, Paula. This is big screen only. Correct. This is just connected TV. Um, okay. And that's the, the, the key change because connected TV and TVs are where everybody wants to be at the end of the day. Although like <clears throat> every device is important, the, the, the big dollars are actually on TV and the, the way that we produce, distribute and consume content ultimately are going to be like defined of who's owning the big screen at the end, which is a bit funny if you think about YouTube being a social media -like platform, like a video platform, but everybody wants to be on TV uh, at the end. And these are the uh, information here, which is basically if you focus and zoom in on all of the data of who inside of streaming is actually growing versus not. Um, two important information. One is Netflix. Uh, Netflix goes from 7.3 to 7.8. It grows steadily. Nice. But YouTube goes from 7.9 to 9.3. And I think that's the key bit that for YouTube, but only, we need to focus on. And sorry, I imagine this is uh, US only. Or... Correct. That's correct. OK. And and also the one thing as when we so just to be uh, you know as much as we can precise with the data, it's also true that through a year like I, I see a bump in August that may be the Olympics. I don't know. I have no idea. But so there could be a seasonality in the year. So you know comparing January and January. So there is a trend. When there is a trend, it's clear. If you see oscillate oscillations during the year, there may be a consideration of okay, there's something happening big in general. I don't know the U.S. election. For a US, US audience may sway a bit for two weeks or maybe more. Uh, so there may be consideration the fact that this is month by month, correct? Yeah, that's uh, <clears throat> that's month by month. The the numbers I was looking at were February to February, so like really the beginning okay. and the end. So they were comparable yeah. in terms yeah. of months. Uh, and that was really 12 months, basically, difference. Yeah. But uh, I think the key points that I think it's important for everyone in the industry is really, however you look at it, I mean, the usage is changing. 
and that's an opportunity, an opportunity for growing for many different, could be rights holder, could be even broadcaster, like just taking it in a different way, like it's just a different direction. But the key thing is that the sooner you actually catch the audience on the big screen, the better it is. It could even be for brands, for example, like there are like all the brands that want to be on TV, but like SMBs, like or big brands that want to just diversify, they can go on connected TV in a completely different way in a market like the US. So I think that this is extremely important from a production distribution, from a right holder brand perspective. It, it really could change the way strategies are going to be dealt with in the next few years. Yeah. And my next question is for Bangu. Um, I always had the impression that YouTube uh, was basically the only modern, I would say, platform that never not completely but never changed i think it looks the same it seems it has the same feature for the last 10 years but lately uh not because of only because i'm following you on linkedin i see a lot of posts on what's new what's new what's new i think there has been an acceleration in terms of product features at least the visible one because i can imagine youtube has changed as a platform inside but tell me the true story <laughs> 100%. I think at the core of it, YouTube has always kept its core kind of like the same. But YouTube is a very prolific platform. Unlike other platforms, it has a lot of little tiny kind of features that you have impact on, you know, from thumbnails to playlists to metadata, etc. But very recently, not sure. Uh, obviously, we see that it's winning across the board, across streaming, across podcasts, across music, etc. Um, maybe it's related to the fact that the new CEO is uh, coming from a product uh, kind of background. Um, and they are adding, they are shipping one feature after another. Uh, obviously, what's new in terms of uh, new functionalities and features, for the last couple of years, they are investing a lot in short form. YouTube Shorts is, everybody knows that if you're not doing shorts, you have to do shorts. Uh, but then they are doubling down on their AI capabilities. Obviously, they have Google backing them and Google has DeepMind. So they must be integrating a lot of AI from content, um, from features like content strategy to content. Most importantly, uh, one thing that YouTube has always been criticized or has always been requested to fix is discoverability and recommendation is recommendation engine. So now with some new functionalities, they are giving a voice to some up and coming creators so that they can be more discovered. So there is this new feature called the hype. You can uh, boost uh, a channel or a content through that hype button. I have never seen it in work. The minute I see it, it's going to be on LinkedIn, so no worries. Um, <laughs> but um, I can see that playing out with content types like, like music and sports because they are both fan-based content so whenever this hype button is available, especially now that we are seeing a lot of um, new uh, kind of like new creators uh, or athletes joining in the sports side, new up and coming artists and musicians joining on the music side, I can see how that functionality can play into them uh, connecting with their fans and, and encouraging their fans. And then on the other side, um, one other important kind of like functionality or feature that I like is obviously being able to create content on the go when it's when it is short. So the ease of content creation has never been or these editing capabilities has never been available on YouTube. But now with their competition with TikTok, etc., they are integrating more and more ways that you can create content on the go, off the shelf of like, uh, just on your mobile, basically. Uh, and one feature, if anybody's hearing out or like listening to us, it's great that they have launched thumbnail A-B testing. Now everybody is asking title A-B testing. So I don't know if it's going to happen anytime soon, but uh, if they can bring title A-B testing, then they will have kind of like a full circle of good metadata optimization uh, functionalities. OK, thank you. So going back to, to Paola, um, how are the creators doing on the platform? How are the 
in our case, sport organization doing on the platform. You have any idea of what's going on in that? We know there are some huge creators, and we know that a lot of sport and organization athletes entities are trying to do something on YouTube. What's the status quo in at the end of 2024? So it's interesting because I see a lot of athletes coming into the space uh, right now. Uh, it's growing. I was actually wondering why this was not happening before. Uh, I've been talking in the industry with a lot of people and just really wondering why a lot of athletes were on Instagram and or TikTok and nothing wrong with that. Absolutely great. But while you're doing Reels and TikTok videos, why not on YouTube as well? It's just uh, not exactly the same thing, but it's very strange that it's not really considered. Now, with uh, Cristiano Ronaldo launching his own channel, that's the, like, I think it's the start of a, a new era. Um, that's the exception of the exception. So number-wise, like growth-wise, like it's just a, a massive thing that happened to, to YouTube. Uh, but I think that athletes have a lot to say on, on YouTube. Uh, and that's a very good commercial opportunity for them as well. So that's one of the biggest trends that I see right now. <clears throat> Rights holders, uh, they're trying to figure out how to leverage more YouTube, like top of funnel in a way. Um, uh, there's a lot of uh, still OTT versus YouTube discussion, which for me is a bit funny because they're not competing. Uh, the two things are very complementary. Complementary. They just serve a different uh, step in the funnel. So definitely YouTube is on the top of funnel, and then you want to convert down the line into OTT. So it's not one against the other. It's never been. Uh, but I think that I see already some are like working a lot into that direction of combining the two entities and just differentiate the strategies, to be honest, which makes total sense to me. Um, so it's getting more into that direction, which is I think it's great because then if you think of the biggest OTT platform, if you think of Netflix, I was actually looking at their channels this morning. And we were having a, a bet with Bengu. It's like, how many channels do you think Netflix has on YouTube? Is if any, and uh, there are like between fifty and hundred channels from Netflix. So if you think okay. about that, that's the biggest OTT ever. Uh, but they okay. have fifty to hundred channels on YouTube. So I mean, I think that's end of story. I mean, that that's the whole story. <laughs> um, and uh, so that's definitely moving forward. I think that still. Archives are not as leveraged as they should, and all rights holders have millions of pieces of content they're sitting on, and they're still not thinking strategically about that because they're like, of course, they have other strategy questions in their mind about whatever is the game for tomorrow or next year, next season, etc. Um, that is still like a whole golden pot, completely untouched the the whole archive part, which for YouTube is the golden pot, to be honest. Um, one thing that I noticed is uh, uh, Jude Bellingham did his own, produce his own uh, original series about himself and posted it on YouTube. I, I saw up to the, my, my son saw up to the fourth episode. So what was unique is full production. So we don't go into Netflix or, and, and I, I don't know if it's in other places, but for sure it's on YouTube available. And it's a long form. I don't remember if the episode of 30 minutes or something like that. But, but it's not like a, you know a small documentary. It's it's a it's a production. So that's also a new a new thing, basically disintermediating completely from obviously <clears throat> the player. Uh, I would say content factory, whatever it is, directly to the fans, even more than what we have seen a, a lot of other players and, and clubs doing. So that's also something I I, I want to follow. Yeah, absolutely. Like the, he was actually after Cristiano Ronaldo, I think he launched the channel one week or 10 days later. Uh, it was uh, it was everything was in the making for a while. And uh, then suddenly uh, everything happened all together. And I think, yeah, they, they, they want to go to their audience. I mean, fair enough. Makes sense. Uh, and, and then it, it's valuable. And I don't remember exactly the news, but I've seen more and more players sometimes getting together and creating content studios. Because clearly you need, especially if you want to target the big screen, you need a, a better than an iPhone in front of you production style, right? 
maybe not the i don't know not the super documentary level but you need serious production capability otherwise you your can content do both cannot compete when you go no no but especially on the big screen yeah <laughs> if it's really shit the content on the big screen i think people just get bored <laughs> but it's my opinion eh? because maybe i'm a boomer so yes and no you can have <laughs> both and it really depends on who's your audience um younger audience are totally fine with quality of production as far as it's authentic um much uh, uh grown-up old audience let's say they they expect something different uh mm -hmm. because it's the big screen but so i think it really depends on what's the audience that they are going after yeah yeah so um clearly it's it's a it's a very dynamic uh, environment ecosystem the youtube one um but uh, I also want to know what's going on with Buzz My Videos, to be honest. So I, I know Bangus was not maybe as fast as uh, YouTube, but was shipping features for Buzz My Video lately. So maybe if we do, if you want to spend a few minutes explaining what you're doing lately, that would be good, I think. Sure. Um, we are shipping um, fast enough, let's say, <laughs> but maybe not <laughs> as fast as YouTube either. We have, um, we have on our side, uh, we know that, for instance, one of the key functionalities on YouTube, and it's completely free, it's available to everyone, and I don't think everyone is using it uh, kind of like as much as they should, which is playlisting. We have recently integrated the playlisting automation into our technology where it's available with one keyword you could create playlists automatically on your channel so um, this then allows us to get more watch time uh, tackle the search kind of like results etc so uh, that is on our side that that was like the main feature on, in terms of youtube these are the things that i've uh, briefly kind of mentioned at the beginning of our um, kind of like conversation i think the one of the most important one is definitely they are launching something similar to discord so they are going to give um, a little bit of a more community boost to some okay. channels this is coming and uh most importantly they are utilizing ai in the you know on your analytics there is this re, uh, kind of like inspiration hub and in that inspiration hub you can see content gaps you can see different content strategy ideas but they are also giving you oh you should be creating a video about xyz title so they are actively trying to shape um what's being watched what's being trending on youtube and bringing it back as content strategy back to the back to the channels so which is good um and again yeah shorts they've recently uh, extended shorts to three minutes uh but this is the dream screen which where you can create shorts and backgrounds if you do not have editing capabilities it, it makes your life easier to kind of create shorts dubbing i'm not sure if this is um talked or experimented a lot by channels right now you were talking about Jude Bellingham and today I was checking his channel I actually did kind of like one comparison with Ronaldo and Bellingham on LinkedIn and we've noticed that uh, he is on each of his videos he is adding subtitles uh, in uh, obviously Spanish and right now in French and uh, in Italian as well in five different languages so he's trying to extend his reach to the audiences that are actually following him because of the club that he's playing in. Uh, this functionality, auto dubbing, is, I think, is going to be kind of groundbreaking in the sense that to extend your reach to, let's imagine that all of a sudden you are sitting in Italy and then Jude, you're watching Jude Bellingham's videos in Italian, dubbed in Italian. I, I, I think it's going to be really cool but I do not see it kind of like being deployed enough or it's not really fully available to everyone. This is the hype button that we were talking about with one boost, you could get your content discovered. And uh, and I think that should be more or less it. That's kind of like the wrap. These are the most recent things that's happening on YouTube. And on Buzz My Video site, yes, we are busy. Uh, we've just come from a trip from New York uh, and we are attending other kind of like conferences. Paula is going away. Maybe she can talk about that as well. So yeah, loads happening at the same time. Q4 is always a very busy quarter end of the year, isn't it? 
Yeah, busy and uh, looking forward to 2025. There's a lot going on like in the roadmap from a product perspective, but also from a strategic perspective. We are like discussing many interesting partnerships with uh, other tech platforms uh, so that we could integrate. Um, so we want to just create the whole value chain for the clients to have everything in, in some cases, either like a platform to create an OTT. So you get the, the, the promotion of the video, like optimization of the videos when you go on YouTube or like a, from a production to distribution and then optimization. Uh, we, we are looking into working as well with more agencies and using the technology. So it's going to be an interesting year to come. Okay, and uh, we'll meet at uh, in Rome for a social food SF, SFS Rome, uh, November nineteen, uh, and then we have Sportel before, and then um, Sports Pro Madrid after. So it'll, it's event season, yeah. right? Okay. Yes. So, and what a pleasure we're going to be cheering together at the same stage. I mean, what a, yes, a yes. pleasure to be together. Let's, let's see you. how it goes. <laughs> Va bene. It's going to be so, fun. I need a scarf. A uh, shirt. Thank you, Paula. Thank you, Bengo, for the update. And uh, maybe let's let's talk again in six months to see what's new in the middle of 2025. Okay. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Bye bye.